The Leaf Blowers are going on outside, and no, I'm not talking about the Matthews Toronto Maple Leafs defeating hockey teams. I'm talking about the actual Leaf Blowers, like the people that are going out there maintaining the block. So I apologize if you hear that on the microphone over here. Let's go over a tweet that I saw that I thought was really interesting from Prashanthier on Twitter. This is from yesterday, 8.28 a.m. When do we get the Connor McDavid is a coach killer articles that were written about Alex Ovechkin 10 years ago? Why does he ask this? Well, the Edmonton Oilers went out there and had themselves quite a bad loss against the Chicago Blackhawks. It's their second loss in a row following a 4-0 loss to the Vegas Golden Knights. And Chicago's loss, or the loss against Chicago, excuse me, was so bad that Dave Tippett got fired yesterday. It was in the morning, it was a big deal, yada yada yada, the Oilers are playing against the Islanders today, so we'll see if their new coaching staff from Bakersfield can actually steer this team in the right direction. But with Tippett being on his way out, it brings up a bigger conversation as to what exactly this team has within its soul. Which is why we had ourselves this tweet made and a few people replying to it. Okay, even though you're asking, when are we going to get these Connor McDavid coach killer articles that were written about guys like Ovi 10 years ago? It actually happened a lot sooner than you would have expected because immediately after we had ourselves this article by Mark Spector on Sportsnet, Dave Tippett's fate with the Oilers was ironically sealed by poor defensive play. And what I want to do is highlight a few specific parts of this article. The link will be in the description as always, but I'm not going to be screenshotting the article myself. Instead, I'm going over onto a tweet here made by Ryan Lambert, who tweeted this out and actually had this tweet go sort of viral. Now, what Ryan did was he tweeted out screenshots of this article, the same thing we had just seen on Sportsnet.ca, but he highlights some of the parts that everybody is kind of getting up in arms about. His tweet goes out there and says this, they're blaming Connor McDavid. Now, okay, look, not they're blaming, it's Mark Spector who's blaming, but let's go over what Spector has to say about the entire firing of Tippett and how Connor McDavid comes into this discussion. Of all the reasons, some real but far more perceived, that Dave Tippett was fired on Thursday, the reason that stands out the most is this. Remember when Dave Tippett was hired and some people worried that bringing in a defensive-minded coach like Tippett would stifle the prized offensive savants that stocked the Oilers' top lines? We draft number one overall for this many years and now we're going to bring in a defense guy? They said. Look at his teams in Arizona, they said. He'll ruin Connor McDavid. Well, as it all came to that predictable Edmonton ending for Tippett on Thursday, here is the irony. Dave, lock him down Tippett, was fired because the Oilers never figured out how to play defense. So, what does it mean when a coach who has a proven track record of building a stout defensive spine in the previous teams comes to Edmonton, and in three years has a team that gives up grade-A chances like Oprah gives out cars? Nice sentence, I like that. Or, for that matter, when Todd McClellan leaves Edmonton in failure and moves on to coach the LA Kings to unexpected success. Doesn't mean that Tippett and fired assistant Jim Playfair forgot everything they knew on how to coach a team to play a proper defensive NHL game, or perhaps after most of three seasons, did a roster that could not or would not accept anything other than star-driven, stats-hungry hockey finally, stubbornly, stop listening. So he's firstly bringing up, okay, you got two defensively-minded guys who came over to Edmonton, and that was seen as a problem because they're defensively-minded, and Edmonton is not really a team that has too much of a defensively-minded makeup. How are they going to do? Well, three years later, they're fired because the team sucks defensively. Connor McDavid uses his surreal speed to fly the zone and score highlight reel goals, but not often enough to prevent chances in his own zone. He's great with the puck, but without it, McDavid, who has spoken of his need to defend better and has made strides, still could not carry Sidney Crosby's equipment bag. He could have he wanted to. If McDavid ever wants to win, he would better learn to want to. Leon Dreisaitl could be the best all-round player on this team, quite possibly the de facto captain, but when a team has wild swings like the Oilers have had, win 6, lose 7, lose 6, win 4, it appears rudderless. We're not in the room, so we don't know for sure, but when a team is this streaky, we should believe the top players like Dreisaitl 
should be able to stabilize the effort, to achieve buy-in, to bring in players like Pugliarvi, who has been entirely lost for two months, back into the fold. Does a new coach bring in new ideas? Sure. They all did. Will it end the same way for the next guy? If the best players don't lead the change, buying in on trying to win a Stanley Cup, not a bunch of hearts and Art Rosses, it's only a matter of time until we're writing the same column again. So what Spectre is pretty much saying here is that Connor McDavid and his lack of significantly improved defensive play, and Leon Dreisaitl and his, let's say, inability to calm a team down and to weather the storm when they're going through big winning streaks and big losing streaks, is ultimately what's costing this team right now. Not the coaching. And sure, I'll agree on one thing, it's probably not strictly just the coaching that is kind of the reason for this team being as bad as it is, or not as bad, but as inconsistent as it is. It's the team itself, Ken Holland, not going out there getting a goaltender for one, but this has always been my perspective when it comes to the McDavid needs to play defense thing. You can go out there and say that you would rather have McKinnon or a Matthews because you would like the all-around style that these guys have compared to the all-around game that McDavid has. It's fair to say, okay, I value defense, and so Nathan McKinnon is the guy that I would take. But when it comes to Connor McDavid, this is a player making $12.5 million a season. He is the most expensive player in the league. He has his face all over Gatorade bottles, Rogers sponsorship ads, and all over marketing for the league because this is the guy expected to be the best player in the world when it comes to giving the league something to talk about. What does the league talk about when it promotes itself to advertisers, to sponsors, when it makes, you know, the ads on TV that you see? It promotes the goals, it promotes the hits, it promotes the saves, but mostly just the goals. Connor McDavid is the most talented goal scorer, playmaker, offense driver in the NHL today. And this is a guy that you're going out there and saying, oh, he doesn't play good enough defense, therefore that's why the Oilers are bad. Are you kidding me? Connor McDavid does not need to worry about defense. Connor McDavid does not need to worry about back-checking and stopping a puck from going into his own zone. Because at the end of that night, if he walks away with three or four points, which is realistic in every game he plays, he's done his job. Connor McDavid's job is to be Connor McDavid, not to be Pavel Datsuk, not to be Patrice Bergeron, not to be a defensively minded guy. Sure, would it be nice for him to be as good defensively as a Bergeron? Yes, but that's not what Connor McDavid was built for. That's not what he's paid for. When he scored that highlight reel goal against the New York Rangers, he said, yeah, I'm paid to do this, so I gotta do it. He's paid to be the best, most dazzling, most starring offensive player in the entire world because he sells tickets, he brings fans out of his seats, and he scores goals like that night in, night out. He scores breakaway goals, he scores back-in tap-ins, he sets up guys with back-in tap-ins, and he's able to dictate play by himself, individually. He doesn't need anybody else to do it. That's why he's the most expensive player in the league. Not because they expect him to back-check. And so, the entire kind of implication that this article has, where it says that McDavid is not that great defensively, sure he's okay, but he's not as good as Crosby, and Dreisaitl is not that much of a leader, because of these two factors, that's why the team is poor. Give your head a shake, man! Like, are you serious? You can't go out there and make the implication that that is so, because what you're also implying is that Ken Holland built a team that is good enough. What you're implying with this article is that Connor McDavid and Dreisaitl are the reasons as to why this mediocre Oilers team with bad goaltending and inconsistent defense is not a top-of-the-line contender. You know how the Tampa Bay Lightning had two Stanley Cups in a row? Yeah, everybody knows that. They did that recently. They didn't do that because Nikita Kucherov is Essa Tikkanen. They didn't do that because Steven Stamkos went out there and played like Patrice Bergeron. They did that because their goaltending is really good. They did that because their defense was really good. And they did that because the depth throughout their lineup was extraordinary. Not because their star players were their best defensive players as well. Okay, no, Hedman, he's a defensive player, but you get what I mean. So, you want to talk about McDavid getting impatient? I think it's stuff like this that's going to start really igniting that fire. So, talk to me in the comments what do you think about this entire perspective over here, blaming Connor McDavid for being the reason why Tippett got fired. The article will be in the description as well, so go ahead and read that. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Rolls 99. 
and bye.